So great question, Tammy. Thank you. Good luck with that. All right, we are taking your calls at one eight seven seven Doc Dolly or two five seven five three nine six. We got Glenn on the line. Hi, Glenn. Morning, Doc. I got a question for you. Sure. Uh, your adrenal glands. Uh, I'd say on a normal basis, it's drip, drip, drip. Mine is more like somebody turned a fire hydrant on. Really? You have yeah, um, I, my I, heart pounds all the time. I feel like I'm running from a grizzly bear. I go to bed at night and I I can't sleep. Um, I'm about 50, mid 50s, in relatively good shape. But man, it just feels like I'm flush with adrenaline 24 seven. It's getting to the point where it's just about impossible to live with. Okay, no, no, that's good. That's good. Has anybody diagnosed you with an adrenal issue, or you're thinking it's coming from the adrenal glands? Uh, I'm thinking it is. Uh, okay. I'm gonna hopefully go see an endocrinologist pretty soon. See what he says. I don't have insurance, so I have to save up before I can go. Oh God, I I can imagine. But but let me tell you something. We've talked about this where you can bias a doctor accidentally. If you walk in, and you say you have an adrenal issue, they're gonna look at the adrenals, and they may not look at the whole picture. Now you said your symptoms were your heart is racing, right? Yeah, my heart pounds. I feel like I'm on fire. So you have um, flushing. You, you you seem to flush or sweat? Uh, I don't sweat excessively any more than I used to, no. Because the first thing I think of, if I'm not biased by the adrenal issue, is thyroid. Hyperthyroid, you're very hot, um, your heart rate is up, you're very anxious, you're on hyperdrive. Hyperthyroid stimulates that epinephrine feeling. So it may be a hell of a lot cheaper to go to a regular medical provider and get at least a thyroid drawn, especially some of the other labs that could also look at your adrenal function or whatnot. Are you slim? Are you losing weight? No, I've been 210 forever. Okay, so the weight's not changing. How are your bowels? Uh, regular. Okay. There's another type of um, issue, which, again, an endocrinologist could pick up. It's called carcinoid syndrome, where you actually have a little tumor, usually benign, though, that, that sends out these metanephrines, which cause this flushing and all that. So you may be on the right track, but I would hate for them to start going down a whole expensive path if this could be the thyroid the whole time. And then here's another thing. What if it's not hormonally related? What if you have an underlying heart issue? If you have a high heart rate, and then, because which came first, the chicken or the egg? We get a lot of this this with people with panic attacks they go oh my god i get a panic attack and then my heart starts to race but what if the heart is doing something funny what if your heart has a funny rhythm or whatnot and because of that your epinephrine kicks in also yeah, no. low blood sugar low blood sugar will kick in your epinephrine too you know yeah the last time i went in and saw the doc uh, i asked him about that he put me on an ekg ran a little panel he says ah eh, you look fine but the trouble that i have with it is that panel is about what 20 seconds worth and it comes and goes. Okay, so you get little fits of heart racing. Uh, yeah, and uh, like you said, you brought up panic attacks. I've been fighting panic attacks and anxiety attacks for quite a while. They got so bad at one point, uh, it was almost uh, suicidal thoughts 24-7. Oh, my. I got a handle on it, you know, just using my head. But, uh, oh, man, I tell you, when it, sometimes when they hit bad, it's just all I can do to keep from igniting Exactly, exactly. So, wow. So, you know, Glenn, um, and it's a shame you don't have any... What city do you live in? I'm here in Las Vegas. Okay. So, I know there's community health centers out there in Nevada health centers, and they will see people on a sliding scale, yep. and their labs are a lot cheaper than if you just, you know, go to a regular medical doctor and, and have the labs ordered. But I would definitely suggest, um, and, and you brought up, an EKG only looks at you for a few seconds. You probably need something like a Holter monitor, something that, um, or a 24-hour monitor that could actually read what your heart rate is doing 24 right. 7 that you could even wear one of those for a week i think they yeah. call it the king of hearts or whatnot because yes we would need to catch your your medical provider would need to catch what your rhythm is doing and take a look at what type of rhythm yes yeah. you still could be right this could all be something going on that's increasing your your adrenaline but um you may have a couple different things going on and your heart should be looked at your thyroid should be looked at as well as everything else Okay, so how do I go in and talk to my doc and not bias him? How do I approach him and say I'm having this problem? but not point to anything specific. Right. Uh, what you say, you know, the best way to talk to a doctor is number one, if you're ever having anything with heart, say that first. You never say that last because doctors hate it when they're on their way out, they're about to go, you know, go to the bathroom, leave for their McDonald's lunch break like I do. And all of a sudden the patient's like, I have heart issues. The first thing you say is, look, my heart races. I also feel flushed. When you 
check me out when you work me up, can you also consider looking at the adrenals? You see what I mean? You don't want to do like you started with the phone call. And I'm not saying this to make fun of you. I'm saying this to help you. When you started with your phone call, you go, I have a problem with my adrenals. Don't do that. Say when, say you have a problem, say what your honest to God problems are. You have panic attacks, you have stress. Sometimes it gets you to the point where you can't take it anymore that you want to die. That's very important to tell the doctor because we don't want anyone committing suicide. Um, That you're having either, if you did have chest pains or whatnot, you're having the palpitations, but you feel high Hot, you feel like you're on fire and ask him what's he going to do for you and if it doesn't include something with the adrenal say look can you please add that but tell him dr dahlia says please check my thyroid <laughs> okay all right hey i was listening to you last week and couldn't pull off the freeway to talk but uh the thing about prayer uh, i've had that work for me in my life <gasps> yes have you do you have an example you could share yeah i was in the hospital motorcycle wreck the doc said i wouldn't live uh, what can I have to tell my, my new bride that I wouldn't live? This was 30 years ago. But uh, just to make a long story short, they came in, uh, family members put hands on me, and uh, it made a huge difference. I was in a coma. I could hear what was going on in there, but I couldn't respond to the doctors or anybody on the outside. But I'm here to tell you, it makes a difference. Oh, God, what a God. That is wonderful, Glenn. Well, God bless you. Thank you for sharing that. You bet. I listen to you a lot. I appreciate your help with me and everybody else. No problem. Thank you. You go and you get that checked out, all right? And then call us back in the next couple weeks and tell us what happened. Okay, Glenn? I'll do it. All right. You take care. Thanks, Doc. Bye-bye.